Hello everyone and welcome back to Assassin's Creed Valhalla with me Longclaw Valerian Steel where we always deliver. But I'm now beginning my Kent story arc and here I am meeting with Basim trying to set up a rendezvous. We're looking for the Paladin Falke, the heretic who has taken my brother Sigurd hostage. Somehow we need to draw her out and by working for this bishop a man of God, I may be able to secure her whereabouts. My first job is to chase down a messenger. So, somewhere just outside the city under a bridge, I find a messenger lying drunk. You know how this works, dump them in the river and they wake up. And then I'll find out what I need to know. Let's see how we get on. So now I know where I'm going. I'm, ha I'm basically rendezvousing in the southeast of England, what was then called the Kingdom of Mercia. And I need to attempt to steal a message from a guy that's inside this church. And he's praying, and it takes a long time for him to finish praying. And if you hang around long enough, there's always a number of different ways to do this, but if you hang around long enough, he will walk out of the church and you can get him around the back. Um, I did try to sneak up on him but he became aware of me quite quickly but I was able to to get hold of the message and then report everything back to the bishop and Basim. We put a plan together now we now know who uh, King Alfred plans to name as his thane and we needed to take him hostage and the bishop is going to pretend to rescue him and that will buy him favor but it turns out that the, the guy that i took hostage is actually an imposter not an imposter he's a double you see the thane doesn't want anyone to know where he is so he hired this man to dress like him and be, pretend to be him so we use him to release some prisoners that a nearby danish camp have taken captive you see we're trying to build an army for an attack on rochester cathedral so following the fake Thane's instructions, the prisoners are released and I have my army. But there's a few things we need to set up first and my job is to go and remove a massive chain which is blocking the river but not before I have a bit of one-on-one -on -one time with Basim and this is the first time Basim has given me any hint about his background and his past and we talk about family. And he talks of a lost son, a family that he has left behind. And that explains why he has spent most of his life wandering. This is an interesting little scene that I get to enjoy before I arrive to remove the chain. Now, if you've done this before earlier in the game, you know you need to go inside a building and shoot the two connecting parts to drop the chain into the water. Before we get into the building you need to take the key from one of the guys and then go through one door and shoot the door that's barred from the other side and head round and it's not much more complicated than that. Once the chain has dropped into the water you can regroup with your allies. It was also decided that Giedrich is going to support us and Basim had gone to fulfil his oath. And Giedrich has turned up with a force happy to attack the Saxons. So here we are, preparing for the attack on Rochester Cathedral. If you know anything about the fortress attacks, it's pretty much the same format as you go through the story. A fortress of this size, there's going to be at least two, maybe three gates, but in this case there was just two. Focus your attention on guiding that battering ram through, making sure you brace often enough to avoid being uh, 
shot at or set on fire and then once you're through the, the first gate you need to disable all of the cauldrons and that just means fiddling around to the left and right and then making one shot against the cauldron and there are about six of them and then you'll be asked to go and man another battering ram and this is again about just bracing and removing yourself walking backwards and then charging and you can allow the rest of the uh, the forces to take on the large part of the army if you want to get more involved in the fight you can but you can also head to Thane Tedman and have your boss fight with him and that is what I've chosen to do and he doesn't provide me with that much of a challenge and before you know it you're able to bring him to his knees and you don't get to kill him because of, remember we've set up a ruse and the bishop is going to turn up with a force and make it look like he has rescued the Thane thus buying the Thane's favour with King Alfred looking for a thane, someone to sit in under his command but ruling this part of the kingdom, it's an important role. But unfortunately the thane Tedmund has taken some poison and collapses and dies right in front of us. So it seems Alfred will need to choose a new thane. The bishop is understandably distressed, his plans have gone to pot. He does say that if I return and speak to him tomorrow he will give me the location of Falke. Nothing left for me to do but to send Giedrich back and tell him thank you for his services and free him from his oath. When we do get to the bishop's church, Falke is way ahead of us and it seems she's already killed him. After a bit of an exchange with her, she tells her men to kill us and bring our bodies to her seminary in Canterbury and I feel like this might be a trap she, why would she give up her location so that we could go there and attack and it's possible that that's where she's holding Sigurd at least that's why we need to check it out you need to escape through the roof and if you head upstairs there's a removable partition in front of one of the walls which will allow you to get out and then head directly to Canterbury Cathedral uh, to the seminary which is where she holds her little worshippers and that's her headquarters when you get inside the cathedral you need to head try to be as covertly as possible but head behind the altar and down the stairs there are other things you can do inside the cathedral but if you're focusing on just this mission you need to go behind the altar and down into the crypt and there's a load of stuff there that Basim will have his head in in some of the scrolls and he'll be taking information stuff that concerns the order remember that this is a very historical building where they've held artifacts and and learnings from probably hundreds of years down in the crypts i just follow the the path round the corner and am faced with another door and as you walk into it you're taken into a cutscene where you're shown a pretty grisly torture chamber. For one minute, I think I'm going to find my brother strapped to it, already been murdered. But there's signs of blood and a struggle and a strange looking box. When I open it, I find Sigurd's severed arm. If you remember the vision that I had when I first went to the seer, she talked about me betraying him and a prophecy. And I saw him in a vision and he was without his arm. Um, so this is very strange. When I talk to Bazim about this, he explains that potentially Sigurd could survive something like that. Physically, it should be possible, but mentally, it may be too much for him. Remember, a Viking needs his, his arms and hands, and he's as strong as his arms and hands will allow. So it will be very difficult for him to lead with just one arm. But as of now, we still haven't found him, and I need to report back to the settlement. Dag has been getting right under my nose the whole time. He refused to come with me to Kent and take part and wanted to stay back. He's been challenging me and accusing me of neglecting my duty to find our Jarl, Sigurd, my brother. When I talk to Randy about Sigurd, she understands and feels as concerned as me. And before choosing another alliance, I'm instructed to go to my quarters and sleep. When I get there, Mouse, my wolf, is waiting and I just follow the instructions and get into bed, but I wake shortly afterwards to sounds of someone shouting my name. Of course, Dag has decided to call me out. He's roused the entire settlement and is calling me out 
to a fight to the death. This has been brewing for some time. Dag has never really taken to the instruction and he follows me very loosely because it's the last order that Sigurd gave him which was to support um, me, his brother. But Dag has always questioned everything and this has been coming a long time. I've been expecting it for a while. He wants a fight to the death. He feels that calling me out and and revealing me as some kind of oathbreaker who's betrayed his brother not telling the truth to the rest of the settlement remember I haven't disclosed to the settlement at this stage what I found out about Sigurd and the fact that he's had his arm severed for now I need to focus on the fight with Dag and he's a ferocious fighter and has a very severe three-part attack which if you can avoid that directly after that there's enough time for you to unleash an attack of your own and there's a few small cutscenes within the fight where Ivor pleads with Dag please don't do this I don't want to kill you but Dag will take all this all the way to his conclusion when you finally bring him to his knees there's one more decision which you have to make and a very important one because it impacts the ending of the story and as you know with Assassin's Creed and the role playing aspect of it some decisions have very dramatic effects on the tale or the way that your ending will, will be revealed and in this case you have the choice to make do you allow Dag to have his axe in his hand as he dies which will allow him a seat in Odin's hall the little conversation you just had with Odin suggests that Odin doesn't even care whether he's in the hall, that he hasn't earned his place. But it's down to you to make this decision, and if you choose to give him the axe, he will be assured a place in Valhalla, which is the Viking heaven. Without his axe in his hand when he dies, he will be shunned from that and forced into an alternative place, which is somewhere that all Vikings fear to be. Doesn't seem like there's much benefit for me not to give him his axe. I had no animosity towards him, he's annoying sure, but he is an, a loyal follower and has always been following to my, and I'm not really the Jarl in this settlement, so I feel like it's not my decision to make, and I don't think that Sigurd would want me to prevent him from going to Valhalla, so I give him the axe and I bury him nicely. And I must now turn my attention once again to the Alliance map and figure out where I'm going next. It seems Falke has taken Sigurd and his severed arm to the kingdom or the, the county of Sussex, which is a surrounding county somewhere near Kent and Essex. And this is it's still in the kingdom of Mercia, so I think this is where I'm going to head to next. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with another video soon.